Hi, my name is Doug Benbaugh. I've been a personal fitness trainer for nearly 20 years, and I've been lifting weights for more than 25. I've studied exercise physiology at the graduate level, and I've made practical application of that learning through competitive bodybuilding. I'm here to show you how to get the most out of your Soloflex muscle machine, the best-selling home weightlifting machine in the world. Weightlifting is simply the best overall exercise you can do because it offers so many good health and good looks benefits. Science has shown that anybody at any age can greatly improve their health with weightlifting. If you don't lift weights, you're losing half a pound of muscle a year through disuse. Even if you're doing regular aerobics, that's criminal because so much of your health depends on healthy muscle tissue. Weightlifting increases your resistance to injury by strengthening your muscles, bones, ligaments, tendons, and your balance. It helps you maintain a strong heart and lungs and lowers your blood pressure, cholesterol, and stress. Muscle helps you maintain healthy blood sugar levels. It gives you more energy, and probably most important, muscle is the key to a strong immune system. These are some of the reasons several recent medical studies have shown muscle building is the key to longevity. And putting on muscle lowers body fat better than anything else because most body fat and sugar is burned inside the muscle cell for fuel. So the less muscle you have, the smaller your furnace for burning fat. Muscle will increase your metabolism to burn fat 24 hours a day. Aerobics alone can't give you this continuous fat burn. And intense aerobics will even strip off vital muscle. Suffice it to say, muscle is your health engine. But weightlifting doesn't take a lot of time, just minutes a day. You don't have to bulk up from weightlifting either. If you just want to get firm and tone to look and feel better, you can with just a little regular weightlifting. To begin with, before you start any exercise program, you should consult your doctor. If your doctor approves of your program, you should start slowly. In weightlifting, that means beginning with very light weights. This will help ensure you learn correct form and you'll also avoid soreness and reduce the chance of injury. In your first couple of weeks with your Soloflex, your objective is learning, not muscular development. When you get started, just do five or six repetitions of a particular exercise with a light weight. If you've experienced no soreness after a couple of days, you can repeat the exercises and add two or three repetitions. If you see that the weight is far below your capabilities after several sessions, you can gradually increase the amount of weight used in every workout until you reach a weight that will allow you to do 15 to 20 repetitions in good form. At this point, you'll start to build muscle. And then you can decide if your goal is working with weights that produce muscular failure at 15 reps per set for toning, or you may choose to use a weight heavy enough that you can only do eight to 10 repetitions. Using heavier resistance like that will yield bigger gains in muscle, but you may also experience some soreness. So you should always wait at least a few days before working that muscle group again. In the beginning, training a muscle group only once a week is certainly enough. Now that I've introduced you to the many benefits of weightlifting, let's move on and start reaping some of those benefits by getting a closer look at your Soloflex equipment and how to use it properly. Assembling your Soloflex is simple. It should go together in minutes. Step one, place the stabilizer on the floor with the ears pointed toward you. Step two, set the bolt, nut, and two washers on the floor near the stabilizer. Step three, place the mainframe into the stabilizer ears. Step four, hold the mainframe in place while inserting the bolt. Make sure one washer rests between the bolt head and the machine, and one washer is between the nut and the machine. Step five, make sure the mainframe and stabilizer are flush and then torque the bolt tightly, placing the bench. Step one, Place the bench legs into the stabilizer supports with the legs leaning away from the mainframe. Step two, rest the bench on the bench legs and slide the bench ears around the mainframe. Step three, insert the black bench pin into the desired hole 
to secure the bench to the mainframe. Placing the barbell arm. Step one, attach the barbell arm by placing the ears around the mainframe and inserting the stainless steel pin through the ears. Step two, place the load pin in the third hole below the stainless steel barbell arm pin and tighten securely. This leaves two empty holes between the stainless steel pin and the load pin. When you're doing pressing and pulling up exercises, this arrangement with the stainless steel pin above the load pin is correct. For pressing down or pulling down exercises, the placement of the pins will be reversed, as noted in your detailed user guide. Whichever arrangement you're using, periodically check to see if the load pin is tight between sets. Butterfly Attachment Assembly Slide the butterfly body down over the top of the mainframe so it sits on the load pin. Make sure the butterfly pins are facing up. Step 2. Place one bushing into each side of the butterfly arm. Step 3. Insert the arm into the body. Slide the D-shaped clevis pin down through the butterfly arm connecting it to the body. Step 4. Fasten the E-clip to the bottom of the D-shaped clevis pin. Repeat steps 2, 3, and 4 with the other side. Step 5. When both butterfly arms are on the machine, open the arms to slide the weight straps on. Secure with the retainer clips. Slide the foam pads on, and that completes your butterfly assembly. Leg Extension Attachment Assembly Step 1. Set the pins of the leg extension into the stabilizer support holes. Step 2. Remove the E-clip with a screwdriver and then remove the clevis pin from the pivot point. Leave the bushings in the hole. Step 3. Attach the leg extension pivot arm to the pivot point. Replace the clevis pin and E-clip. Step 4. Using the supplied bushing, clevis pin and E-clip, Attach the lower pivot point of the leg extension to the pivot arm. First insert the bushing, then the pivot arm, then the clevis pin, and finally the E-clip. Step 5. Attach the bench to the mainframe using the bench pin in hole number 24. Step 6. Attach the leg extension to the bench using the supplied hitch pin. Slide on the weight straps, retainer clips, and urethane foam pads. And that completes your leg extension assembly. Now we're going to begin our Soloflex workouts. For your convenience, we've separated those into distinct divisions, the upper body, mid body, and lower body, followed with some accessory exercises. You'll find all these in your user guide. And before you begin your first training session, always warm up mildly with some easy stretches and follow your workout with more productive stretches. And we're ready to go. Kelly, we're going to move into the bench press, which is a great compound exercise for the chest. Okay. Uh, getting into position on this one, just sit sideways on the bench, and you're going to take a cross-handed grip, and you're going to slide and pull under. 
makes for a nice snug fit so you get a lot of positive resistance from the start of the press. Okay. Okay? Coming out the same way. Slide it down and out. Okay? Sideways on the bench, left hand under, right hand over. Slide Perfect. Very good. And a couple of different positions you can do on this. Obviously, you can vary your grip on it. The closer you come in, the more you start to work your triceps wider out, more to the pectoralis muscles. Okay. You also can slide down a little further under to hit a little different angle towards upper chest or head more towards the main frame to get a little bit of the lower chest. Okay. okay. So you can vary your angles quite a bit on this. Okay, you're going to press just short of locking the elbow joint again. That okay. keeps tension on the muscles and not on the joints. Okay, slow negative coming down. Top of the chest without resting it there. Good. And have your elbows kind of flare out in line with the shoulders. You get a better stretch to the pecs that way. That's great. Easy coming down. How's the weight feel to you? Feels pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I could probably add a little bit more weight. Right. Now, another option that we have here, we can use the free weight adaptability here. Okay. And uh, it's a real quick change. has a real nice feel, the combination of the weight straps and the free weights together. And you can do this on any one of the Soloflex exercises. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's try that. Then again. Okay, easy on the negative coming down. And bury your grip just a little bit. Try coming in a little bit with the grip. And now this, you want to hit more of the triceps. Pull your elbows in real tight. Okay. Good. Press it out just short of locking. I'll feel a good flex in the triceps at the top. Elbows will stay in in difference to the chest work where your elbows are going to be out. You want to hug along the sides on this if you want to get more work to the triceps. And then easy coming down. Let's try one more. Good breathing. Tight contraction and then slow negative coming down. Great work. Okay, Karen, the next exercise we're gonna do is the dorsi bar pull down, and we'll have to make a small adjustment of the machine to do that. So we're gonna remove the retainer clips. You hold this for me. And slide off just the back end of the weight strap here. Let it hang. And then the load pin is gonna go three holes above the stainless steel lever arm pin. And that'll leave two holes right in the middle that you can see. And then you twist that snugly. And then we're going to lift the rubber arm up, reattach, steal one of your clips. Keep. And then we'll do the far side. And ready to go. Okay. Have a seat on the bench and you're going to take a grip on the bar past shoulder width. Good. All right now I'm going to give you a, a little change of grip here that most people don't do but it's a good advantage. You're going to take your thumb and roll it over the top side of the bar. All right what this does is eliminate some of the involvement of the forearm muscles which will limit the source of the pull from your back is what you're trying to target here. Okay you're going to Pull down and move your head slightly forward to clear. And then right there, there's your squeeze, or what's called a peak contraction. Squeeze your shoulder blades together tightly for two seconds, and then slowly release the squeeze to the stretch. Try to focus on the muscle group you're working here, your lat muscles in your back, and try to feel as relaxed as you can in your forearms and your biceps. Keep those very loose as you pull. So you really think about pulling from the source rather than using some of the smaller muscles that are in between that and the bar. That's real good. Pull down and then squeeze now. Tighten the shoulder blades together and then slowly release. Okay, now think about a little breathing here. You're gonna exhale as you come down. Tight squeeze for two seconds on your peak contraction. Slow eccentric. We're coming back to that starting position. A little stretch, you're gonna try one more. Exhale and then feel the tight squeeze and then slow release to the top. Beautiful. Our next exercise, Kelly, is the incline bench press. 
and in difference to the flat bench that we did, it doesn't require as much weight because it's much more isolated to the upper pectoralis muscles. Mm -hmm. So we're going to remove the weights if you do that for me okay. and adjust to a higher position on the machine. Our bench angle should be really no more than about 30 degrees. Okay. Otherwise, you start involving too much of the shoulder muscles. I guess I could help you with these. Thanks. And in getting into position on this, it's similar to what we did on the bench press, sitting sideways on the bench, right. and then crossing your hands and swinging down and under. Okay. It should feel a real snug fit. Okay, we're ready to go. Perfect. Yeah, right through. Just about the right position. You want to be just towards the upper part of the chest on this. Okay. Okay. Now you can vary your grip on this narrow or wide to affect it a little bit differently in the chest muscles. You're going to press just up short of locking the elbow joint there. Perfect. And then again, that real slow negative on the way down. Good, your elbows are out and in line with your shoulders. So you get a good stretch to the pectoralis muscles. Steady on the negative, good. Get a good exhale on the concentric phase. And then taking the air in on the eccentric or the downward phase. That's great. Short of locking, perfect. Steady coming down. Once you switch to a little bit wider position, get a little bit different feel here. You'll take a little bit off of the triceps and move a little bit more to the pectoralis muscles. Real strong. Good. You feel a little bit of difference mm -hmm. there where you're mm -hmm. stretching it out a little more in the chest. That's great. Let's see if we can get one more here. Real strong. And then fight the negative. Great. Getting out of position, same as the bench press. Okay. Swing down and under. Perfect. All right, All right, good set. Thank you. Next is the bent over row. And to get into position, I'm going to have you straddle the lever arm here with your feet about shoulder width apart. And then you're going to move your hips and seat against the mainframe. Okay? Okay. So let's step in there. Good. And you just pass shoulder width on your grip. I'm going to have you take a thumbless grip again on this one. Okay, and arch your lower back. You want to really set an arch in your lower back to protect it throughout the range of motion. And okay, now draw the bar up right to the lower part of your ribs. Good. And that squeeze and that slow on the negative. Still maintaining that arch in the lower back. That's good. Pull back. Now there's your peak contraction at the top. Slow negative. You're going to exhale as you come up. Good. Now pinch your elbows in towards your spine. There you go. And one more to go. Feel a mild stretch there. Good, up, pinch in real tight and slow. Still maintain your arch as you release the bar. Good, and then slowly up to the standing position. Perfect. Next we're gonna move into one of Solo Flex's free body exercises and that's the dip. And we've taken the bench legs that were in the front of the machine and we've put them around for stabilization, also safety. Okay, okay and this is your dip bar, which you just swing underneath the lever arm and it locks right into position and it's held there very firmly by your body weight. And you just jump up into position here. And then your slow negative coming down. Feel the stretch. And then press up in a locked out position. Tighten the triceps at the top. Okay? Okay. Give that a shot. Good. Easy on the negative. Good. This pulls in the pectoralis muscles in the chest. You feel quite a bit of tricep on this as well. Now the further you lean into it, the more you're going to pull the pectoralis muscles into play. Good. Steady coming down. The more upright you are, the more triceps come into play. Exhale as you come up. Perfect. That's it. Get a lot of oxygen in there. Tough exercise. Anytime you're moving your own body weight, it's real difficult. That's the way to drive them up. Let's try another one. Easy coming down on the negative. Hesitate. Feel the stretch. Drive. Squeeze. Good. And then steady on the negative down. Perfect. All right, good work.
Kelly, we're going to move into another one of the free body exercises, and it's called a pull-up. Uh, okay. There's various uh, hand grips on this, and we'll go through those, but initially we're going to begin with a close grip, palm up. And if you step up and grip the bar just inside shoulder width, good, and you're going to bend your knees and cross your ankles okay. behind you, good. Feel a good full stretch in there. Mm -hmm. You know, pull up and try to get your chin up over the top of the bar, flex the back muscles a little, and then a real slow negative coming down. Key on this is feeling a real nice stretch at the bottom of the range of motion. Feel that? Uh -huh. Okay, and then pull from those back muscles up to the top. Slow coming down. With the palm up grip, you also pull quite a bit of bicep into play as well. And then slow on the negative coming down. Step away. Perfect. All right, real good form. Nice steady negative on that. Your breathing was great. And now the variations on that, you can take an overhand and go for a wider grip on this. And your position is the same with your feet. You cross your ankles, and this one you pull up in front. And then you're gonna come down, stretch at the bottom again. Pull up in the front. That slow negative coming down. Feel the stretch. Okay. Now just opposite to that, you can turn around face away from the main frame on this and pull up behind the head. And that version goes like this. Be right in here. Watch the back of your head and your neck on this. Don't come up too forcefully into the bar. Pull up. Sit down. Stretch. Step off. There's a couple of variations you can use just to get a little more variety into your program and change from time to time working the different angles. Karen, we're going to work on a pull-up now, and it's very difficult for some people at first to do a regular full pull-up with your own body weight. So a modified version of that is called a negative pull-up. And what you're going to do on this is step up onto the bench, take an underhanded grip just inside shoulder width, okay? Secure yourself in this up position, and then slowly lower down, straddling the bench at the bottom. And then just pull up a little bit, step onto the bench, and then back to the beginning position again, okay? okay. All right. Underhanded grip. Good. Secure the top position. Okay, your feet are going to straddle the bench coming out. Real slow negative, so you're really working. Excellent. Pull up a little bit and then step. Good. Secure the top position again. Great. And then easy on the negative coming down. Straddle. Hang a little for the stretch. And then step. Great. Kelly, our next exercise is the butterfly, and it very specifically works the pectoralis muscles in the chest. If you'd have a seat with your back against the main frame there, and you're gonna put your elbow at each pad, hand up on the bar, that's great. And your force of application here is from the forearm and not from your hands, so you wanna really relax your hands. And even at times, you know, uh, just to resist it, I'll, I'll keep even an open palm at times, but just keep your fingers relaxed. Okay, and you draw both sides in, and there's a strong peak contraction right in the center. Great. And then you're going to slowly release the eccentric. Go to a mild stretch position here, but be careful not to overstretch the shoulder joint. Okay. okay. Push with the forearms. Squeeze the peak contraction in the center. This gets all the, what's called the sternal fibers that are attached right in the center of the pectoralis. It's almost impossible to get with any other exercise effectively. That's why this is so good for the chest muscles. Now as these get real tough at a very end of a, a set that you'd be doing, if you start going towards failure, if you have a training partner that you're working with, they can step in and help you to force through that last little squeeze where it gets very difficult at the end of the range of motion. But then always release that negative slowly to protect okay. the shoulder joint. Excellent work. Now, rowing with leg extension is our next exercise, Kelly. And this is another great back exercise that you can use in conjunction with some of the other solo flex exercises. Okay. Now we're going to use the curl tubes on this like we did with the standing bicep curl mm -hmm. to get a nice smooth range of motion. So if you'd step into position here with your feet on the other side of the pads, good. And you're going to brace your feet just as if it was a tug of war. Okay. And you have to brace against a pole here. Okay, and a nice arch maintained throughout the entire exercise that protects the lower back. All right, relax your grip and arms. Then pull your elbows back as far as you can. And then you're gonna squeeze them down and in towards your spinal column. Great. 
and then easy coming back, still maintaining that arch, but you can drift a little bit forward just so long as you hold that arch. And then pull back with the elbows, and then squeeze down and in towards the spine. Excellent. Karen, we're going to try another lat exercise or back exercise done at a little bit different angle, and this is called a bench row. So what you can do on this is lie down just as if you were doing a bench press. Okay and then reach up and grasp the bar. So a few different grips you can take. An overhanded grip, fairly wide, is one of them. All right, now we've got your position fairly far down on the bench. All right, now that's gonna work more towards your upper back, your trap muscles, and also the rear part of your shoulder, the rear deltoids. And then we'll move to another position, okay? So pull straight down, think of pulling your elbows down, and then try to squeeze them in a little bit at the bottom. Perfect. Okay, now I want you to try an underhanded grip here. Perfect. All right, again, think about pulling your elbows down and back. We'll hit those lats at just a little different angle. Stretch up at the top. Now think of keeping your elbows fairly close to your body as you pull down. Yep, and then try to pinch them just a little at the bottom. Excellent, good. All right, now we're gonna have you move all the way up to the main frame. And this will bring the angle that's working to the back muscles more to the mid-back now, a little bit away from the rear part of the shoulder, okay? So let's go to the overhanded grip again. All right, pulling down. Now try to squeeze in a little bit. Good. It's a little more powerful position. You'll feel you're able to pull down a little stronger and a little further on this. Okay, and then squeeze down. Flex real tight. Good. Does your back feel in a comfortable position here? Good, yeah. with your knees up and drawn in like that, it keeps your back nice and flat against the bench as well. Great. The next exercise we're going to do is the frontal squat, which primarily focuses on the quadriceps and the front of the thighs. And getting a position on this one, Kelly, if you step up right to the bar, the bar should rest right at the bottom of the rib cage. Okay. And you prop your heels up on the stabilizer bar and come way up underneath so the pads rest on the front of the deltoids here, crossing your hands over the front of the lever arm. And press up into position just short of locking the legs out, and then arching your back real slow, negative coming down. Okay? Okay. Let's take a shot at that. Good, and pads right in the front of the deltoids there. Okay. Real strong drive to the top. And then easy down. And then drive. Weight more towards the heels on this as well. You want to feel you've got your weight back. As your hips come back, feel the weight go back. Keep and then drive. Tighten them at the top. And then use that slow negative coming down for your last rep. Great. Kelly, our next exercise is the deadlift and it's very compound in nature, using a lot of the muscles in the lower body and also as stabilizers, many of the muscles in the upper body as well. Mm -hmm. So because of that compound nature, we're gonna increase the intensity a little bit by adding the Soloflex plates on each side here, okay? Now if you'd step into position on the bench, straddling your barbell arm, and you're gonna drop your hips back. You've got an overhand shoulder width grip, okay, and keep a nice arch in your lower back. This is a protective factor here. Okay. Right, now drive to the top with your legs as you come up. Excellent. Just short of locking the knees at the top of the range of motion. Okay, now dropping your hips back as you come down. Real good. And then drive coming up. Weight should be a little bit more towards your heels on this. That steady negative coming down. That's great. And drive to the top. Good. Now we're going to use that last negative effectively. So lower down in perfect form. And relax. Kelly, we're going to move into the leg press now, which is a great exercise for the lower body. So if you'd sit down facing the main frame, straddling the bench, and get a grip on the bar and slide your hips well underneath. Okay, from this position, you're going to place both feet equidistant apart. Okay. And right on the middle of your foot. Exactly, that'll give you a good stable position. Okay, press to a position just short of locking your knee joint. That's great. And then slow coming down, keeping your legs parallel. There's a tendency on this one to kind of frog out with your knees. All right. All right, you want to keep your legs parallel as you go up and down. Just short of locking them, great. And then slow coming down. Excellent. 
The leg extension is our next exercise, Kelly, and it's a good addition to or supplement to some of the other leg exercises that the Solo Flex has. Okay. To get into position on this, you're going to slide the top of your foot right underneath the bottom pad and lean back at a fairly good angle. And the reason that you do that is there are four muscles in the quadriceps and only three of them will come into play if you're in an upright position. But by stretching the muscle that crosses the hip joint with that backward angle, you use all four together, okay? So lean back, extend up just short of locking the knee joint to protect your knee capsule, and then slowly lower down for that eccentric phase, okay? okay. All right, this is very specific to the muscles in the front of the thigh. Why don't you give it a shot? Good, you got a nice backward angle here. Just short of locking, but you can still tense the muscle mm -hmm. without locking the joint. Good, negative coming down. Extend up and then squeeze. Great. Nice, slow, smooth, negative on this. You can also get a little variety of which segment of those quadriceps that you hit by angling your feet either in or out. So okay. if you were to angle in like that, then you isolate more of the lateral portion. Right. Okay? And then if you were to angle outward, then more of the inner quadricep will come into play. You feel a difference on mm -hmm. those as you contract? So you can use those interchangeably. Karen, our next exercise is a leg curl, and it's another of the accessory exercises for Soloflex, which you can use either in conjunction with or in substitute for the stiff leg deadlift. Okay. Okay, your positioning on this is just having the foam pads rest just above your knees. Okay, and then you just slide down into position. Okay. okay. Why don't you do that? Perfect. Okay. Now you're gonna draw your heels up. Strong contraction at the top and then squeeze very tightly for two seconds. It's a great peak contraction here. You wanna make sure you utilize it. Then slowly descending. Feel a mild stretch in the hamstrings at the bottom. Now think of exhaling as you contract. Good. And you're gonna inhale as you descend. It's perfect. All right, pull up nice and strong here. Okay, now I'm gonna have you point your toes away from your shins. What this does is relaxes the calf muscle and isolates more of the hamstring now. It's a little more difficult this way, but you really feel the effects of it. That's great. You won't need nearly as much weight on this as you would a leg extension. You find the quadriceps are about 40% stronger than the hamstring muscles. But it's real important to work those so you stay in balance around the knee joint. Okay. Now we're gonna move into the standing calf raise. Uh, the best way to get into position like is ducking underneath the bar and you're gonna let those pads rest right in your trap muscles in your upper back rather than your neck. And place one foot onto the foam pad. Okay. okay, and then you're gonna press up from that position. Okay, so secure your hands on, duck under. Good, one foot up under the pad. And then press up in the position, great. Okay, now slide your heels back. Good, now you're gonna slowly allow them to sink below the level of the bench. Okay, that'll give a good stretch to the calf muscles. Come up as high as you can. Now there's a peak contraction or squeeze that you get in the calf muscles at the top. And then a real slow negative coming down. Feel a nice mild stretch in there. Mm -hmm. Good. Try to keep your back nice and firm on this. You've got weight coming right down your spinal columns. You want to ensure that your lower back is real firm and tight throughout the range of motion. Tight peak contraction squeeze. And easy down. And I want you to just slide your heels out a little wider. So you're going to go more of a pigeon toed. Heels out, toes in. And give it a couple of repetitions here. Give it a nice squeeze. You push a little bit more off the outer border of your foot on this one. Nice tight squeeze, good. And you can also vary this by pulling your heels in, toes out. And now you'll affect a little more of the inner portion of the calf here, the medial side. Good squeeze. Now feel a nice stretch at the end, and then lower down. Step out underneath. 
We're going to go into what's called a donkey press now. So if you keep your knees actually locked out, very few exercises where you lock your knees out. But on this one, it's necessary to pull in the proper calf musculature. Okay, you're going to press up as high as you can, squeezing the calf muscle at the top of the range of motion for two seconds. And slowly coming down. Let's bury your foot position again just to hit different angles on the calves. Okay. You can take your heels out just a little bit, angle your toes in, and then relock the knees out after you're in position. Okay? Press up, squeeze them real tight. Good. And if you can push off the outer border of your foot on this, it'll affect more of the lateral portion of that calf muscle. And then easy down. Good. Okay, now move your heels in and you'll feel a little different stress to that calf muscle. Okay, now push off the inside of your foot more towards your big toe here. And you'll feel more to the medial or inside portion of the calf when you squeeze on this. Give it a good tight squeeze at the top, really extend it. Let's go for another one. Feel that mild stretch in there, okay? And then press up as high as you can, squeeze. And then easy coming down. And then just lower down like you would with a leg press. Slide out. That was great. You always want to make sure that you have some type of a rubberized sole on your shoes when you're doing this as well to keep a good grip on there. Karen, we're going to do a couple of exercises that target more towards the lower abdomen. Okay, one's called a leg band and then a body curl. We're going to start off with a leg band. So if you'd lie down on the bench here and take an overhanded grip on the load pin there, good. And bend your knees up to about a 90 degree angle right there. All right, now you're going to bring your knees in low and tight. Exhale and squeeze. Feel the lower abdomen squeezing in there as you come in. And slowly lower down right to there. You don't need to go any further than that. It just affects the lower back. Okay. okay. Exhale, draw in. Squeeze as tight as you can. Perfect. Easy coming down. Okay. Exhale. Now squeeze real tight. All right. Now I'm going to have you straighten your legs out. All right. Now this is called a body curl. It's much more difficult. You want to be real careful not to go too far down on this. Okay. okay. Try to keep your lower back into the bench as much as possible. Okay. Now lower your legs down as a unit. And then you're going to curl your entire thigh and leg up and then your squeeze is right there and then easy coming down good knees almost straight but not quite and we're going to tighten and then slow negative now when you get to this position on your last rep just bend your knees so it's more comfortable and then you can just sit up with it perfect so you feel lower abdomen there yeah those are good our next exercise kelly is the incline sit up okay. and we're going to adjust the bench Leaving three holes between the bench and the load pin here. Now this is a pretty tough angle, but you've been at this a while. Uh, just beginning, you may want to start out with a much softer angle on this and work your way up. Okay, with a good flex in the knee joint here, hands on the hips, you're going to stay rounded in the shoulders. You're going to do that slow, eccentric coming down just to a point before you hit the bench. Exhale and squeeze real tight at the top. You don't want to come all the way up because that's a rest phase in here. Okay. You want to stay in that spot where the abs are still contracted. Okay? All right. Good. Your hands on the hips, shoulders rounded. Real steady coming down. And you're going to exhale on the way up. There's your squeeze point. And then easy coming down. Good. Come up not quite so hot right there yeah steady coming down looking real good exhale you want to make sure all the air is out of the abdominal cavity before you contract easy coming down good let's try two more strong squeeze real good steady negative there we go let's squeeze and you got it perfect karen our next exercise is the roman chair sit up and it works still some of the lower abdomen, but will also, as you go through the range of motion, bring in some of the middle and upper abdomen as well. Okay, I'm gonna put a Roman chair pin in to secure your feet on this. And if you'd sit sideways on the bench facing me, slide your toes under the pin. Good, put you in a nice stable position. Uh, your legs should be just about a 90 degree angle between your thigh and your lower leg. And you're gonna put your hands on your hips slightly round your shoulders. Now you're going to slowly, very slowly descend towards the floor, but never go past the parallel point. Okay? Easy coming down. Great. Exhale, come up, 
and only about three quarters right there. Very short range of motion, okay? And then easy coming down, no more than parallel to the bench, good. And then squeeze at the top as tight as you can, good. You'll feel a stretch as you descend. And then the contraction at the top where you really kind of curl and squeeze. Real good. Steady on the negative, exhale, contract real strongly at the top, and then just sit up. Perfect, good, how those feel? It's very short range of motion in there, but it's very dynamic. And you want to stay very tight in the lower back as well to protect it. Yeah. Karen, our next exercise is the crunch. And this really isolates the upper abdomen. And you could use this in places like the incline sit-up. Okay. Or maybe the Roman chair. Okay. All you need to do is just roll up a towel here. And if you would lie on your back, you just pop this around the end of the leg extension. Get a grasp on that and put your hands right along the side of your head so they're kind of locked in a position there so you aren't really holding on with your arms too much. Okay, now curl up as high as you can and then squeeze real tightly in the abdomen. That's great. Then you slowly release the curl, but don't release it all the way so you don't get a relaxation phase at the bottom. Okay, again, exhale, squeeze real tight, and then slowly release. Good, you feel a lot of concentrated effort right in that upper abdomen. Kelly, we're gonna move into another exercise that involves the shoulders and also pulls in some of the trapezius muscle here. It's called a military press. And this is done facing the machine. Uh, if you come in and sit to position the barbell arm, it should be just right about the top of the chest. Okay and your grip is right at shoulder width apart, feet flat on the floor, a nice little arch to the back. Then you're gonna press just short of locking your elbows, and you're gonna come just a little bit underneath the bar with your head, and then slowly coming down the bottom position right here again. Okay? All right. So work a little more of the front deltoid. Press up and then move. Just a little bit under, that's great. Easy coming down in the negative. That's it. You also get, in, and I'm sure you can feel some tricep involvement here. Right. Last half of the movement, triceps take over to lock out. All right. That's nice and strong. That's good. Again, okay, real slow coming down. And relax. Kelly, our next exercise is a standing bicep curl. And for a smoother range of motion, we're going to use the Solaflex curl tubes. Okay. So I'm just going to slide one on each side here. And if you'd step up onto the bench with your feet about shoulder width apart, and the bar should be about fingertip level, which is real good. Underhanded grip. As you curl up, you're going to move in a little bit to squeeze the biceps for the peak contraction. Okay. It's nice and smooth. And then squeeze in. Yeah, there's your peak contraction. That's great. And then steady coming down, nice, steady, eccentric. I feel a stretch here in the bicep at the bottom of the range of motion. Curl up, move in, and then squeeze real tight. Good. Then easy coming down. You want to keep a nice firm lower back on this slightly arch, and also a little bit of flexing in the knee joint. Okay, curling in. Excellent. And then slow coming down. It's perfect. Okay, Kelly, we're gonna move into tricep pushdowns. Okay. And if you step up on the bench and take an overhanded grip just inside shoulder width, okay, and then draw your elbows in real tight to your sides here. Slight bend in the knees. All right, you're gonna push down until your arms are fully extended, but not quite locking out the elbow joint. You'll feel a, a real strong contraction in the triceps. Mm -hmm. Okay, keeping your elbows in as you come up. Hesitate just under chin level. Push down, squeeze, okay, and then as you come up, just pull those elbows in, that's it. Right about there, good. And then press down, squeeze at the bottom. Slow coming up, elbows in nice and tight. Hesitate, good. Exhale, good breathing. And flex real strong at the bottom. Let's try another one. Easy coming up, that's great. Squeeze nice and tight, and then slowly coming up on the last one. Perfect. Good. How do they feel? 
That felt real good. Good. That was a perfect hide for you. The bar was just right above chest level, and you got to a nice strong contraction at the bottom. Yeah, I got a real good burn on that one. Now we're going to move into the tricep extension, and if you just step right onto the bench facing away from the mainframe, and reach up behind you, that's it. Now move your hands in just inside shoulder width with your thumbs over the top. Excellent. Slight bend in the knees. And you're going to get a tight squeeze in the tricep to the bottom of the range. Now come up real slow and feel a mild stretch at the top of the range and then press down and squeeze tightly at the bottom. Good. Easy coming up. You want to try to keep your elbows in as much as possible on this. So you drive it into the triceps. Good. And steady coming up. Stretch just for a little bit at the top. Okay, I want you to move your hands in just a little bit, about an inch or so on each to two inches on each side. Okay, you're going to feel a little difference here. It's a little more difficult as you move your hands in. It drives some of the stress more into the triceps. So rather than add a lot of weight, it's a little more advantageous to keep a close grip and get a little more work to the triceps. And slowly up. Perfect. The next exercise we're going to do is a shrug. So if you'd step up on the bench, and your feet are just about shoulder width apart. You know, and going down and getting into position, keep a nice arch in your lower back to protect it. You can use your legs to raise up into the upright position and still maintain that arch in your lower back, slight flex in your knees. Okay, now you're gonna go straight up towards your ears, squeeze those trapezius muscles here. Okay, now roll back, and there's a second squeeze. Okay, and then slowly release that contraction into a stretched position. Feel that nice stretch in there? Yeah. Good. Okay, again, squeeze up and then roll back. It's an area that builds up a lot of tension and release, stretch, feel that stretch in there. This will help to condition those muscles. Squeeze, good. Roll back, that's it. Stretch, your arm should feel and your grip should feel very relaxed so all the pull is coming from here. Okay, again, up, squeeze real tight, nice strong contraction. Pull way back, real good, and then easy coming down, and feel a nice stretch. Now as you set the bar down, use your legs to bend, bend your knees and keep the arch in your back. Perfect. Kelly, now we're going to do a variation on the regular shrug, and that's called the Haney Shrug. Now remember the regular shrug is done just at about fingertip level with the bar, and you're elevating to contract the traps, you're rear rotating, contracting again, coming down into a stretched position. Mm -hmm. Now how the Haney varies in that, you're gonna actually turn around from the mainframe and grip behind your back. What that does is that automatically rear rotates your shoulders. So you're in a real good angle of pull for your trapezius muscles right from the beginning. Okay, so you bend a little bit in the knees, grasp the bar, and you're going to move your hips just slightly forward so you can clear the bar behind your back. Come up as high as you can, squeeze those muscles and traps, and then you're going to slowly come down and work the real good stretch here, trapezius muscles. Okay? okay. And then bend your knees to release out of position. Uh, Kelly, next we're going to move into the back and neck press. Okay. And to get into position on this, you're going to slide yourself back underneath the bar and the bar is going to rest on your trap muscles. Okay, get your grip and slide up into position. That your heels will be against the mainframe here. And you're going to press just short of locking your elbow joint at the top of the range of motion. Keep a nice stable lower back and then do a very slow descent. Not quite letting it rest onto your shoulders. So you keep some dynamic tension there. Okay? All right. Just slide your hips underneath, good, and then you come up underneath it and move forward a little bit and then your feet will rest on the other side of the stabilizer, good. Okay, Okay. now press up, just short of locking the elbow joint at the top, real good, and then slow and steady coming down, that's it. Press, excellent. This will work deltoid muscles, but it's compound in nature, so you're going to pull some other muscle groups into play on this. As you get about halfway through the range, the lockout comes from the triceps. You also work some muscles along the front of your rib cage as well, and pulling a lot of the trapezius in the upper back. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
perfect. And you can slide back out underneath. Okay. Good, take a deep breath. How'd it feel? Pretty good. All right. Pretty good. In yeah. the same configuration with approximately the same weight, we can go into another exercise called the tricep press here. Okay. So if uh, you position yourself just about where you are, and what you're gonna do is grip the bar in this fashion behind your head, and then you're gonna press straight up overhead, trying to keep your elbows in. Okay. Okay. Okay, now the elbows will come in. Good. Get a nice stretch, kind of a mild stretch. Feel that gently pulling you downward. And then press up to full extension at the top. Tighten the tricep muscles there. And then easy coming down, trying to force those elbows to stay in. Good. The more you can keep them in, the more you isolate the triceps. That's it. And then press up. Squeeze tight at the top. Good. And then slow coming down, forcing the elbows in again. That's great. Now we're going to move into the bicep curl lat pull. And if you'd step over and straddle the bench here, Karen, uh, to measure and to ensure a good full stretch at the top, the bar should be just a little bit above your head here. And this is perfect. So if you take an underhanded grip just inside shoulder width and have a seat on the bench, good. Okay, now you're going to think about pulling your elbows down and then you're going to pull them back as far as you can at the bottom of the range of motion right under your chin, okay? Pull down and then pull back, good. And then slowly coming up. Now you're going to feel a stretch in the lat muscles at the top. And then pulling down, squeeze back. And then slow negative to the stretch. Good. Strong arch, squeeze back real tight. And then slowly release the negative on the last one. That's great. Next exercise we're going to do, Karen, is called the upright row. And it works some of the trapezius muscles, also the frontal muscles of the deltoid here, and some of the biceps. Now to find the correct positioning on this, if you step up onto the pad, you should be just about fingertip level here. Bend your knees, and then come up to the upright position. Now as you pull up on this, you need to move your body in just a little bit, and it'll come right up underneath your chin. Elbows continually staying higher than the bar and then slowly lower down that nice easy negative and then come into a stretched position at the bottom of the range. Okay. Okay, and then again bend your knees. Okay. Looks like that's a real good height for you. Bend your knees, arch in the back, good. Okay, now think about your elbows leading in the exercise and then move in and under the chin. Perfect. And then slow negative coming down, that's great. And you feel that mild stretch in the trapezius at the bottom. Draw it up, elbows high, move in. You should feel kind of a squeeze in these muscles here at the yeah. top of the range. Slow negative, good. Maintain just a slight flexion in your knee joints here. A little more dynamic position for this and it'll protect your back. Good. Try to inhale on the down face. Perfect, let's try another one. Exhale, good. Squeeze into it, that's great. Easy coming down and then bend your knees when you come out of position. Perfect, all right, real good. Now that you've completed your workouts, we're certain you'll reach the goals that you desire on either the Soloflex muscle machine, the rocket, or the Soloflex dumbbells. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us at Soloflex. One thing to keep in mind is that before, during, and after each one of your workout sessions, Stretching is very important to incorporate into your program. We'll take you through just a couple of those now. In the lower body for your calf muscles, if you place your heel on the floor and stretch slightly forward, the principle to remember here is to stretch comfortably, mild tension and never pain. To your quadriceps for the various leg exercises, drawing your heel in towards your seat, we'll stretch the front of your legs, and for your hamstrings and the back of the thighs, if you just lean slightly forward with your foot up on a bench, you comfortably stretch the hamstrings. To your upper body, for your chest musculature, on a vertical piece, such as a Soloflex mainframe, turning slightly outward, comfortably stretch the chest muscles. For your back musculature, turning away and leaning back, will stretch through the latissimus muscles. Moving on to the arms, reaching down the center of your back, stretch the triceps over your opposite shoulder to stretch the deltoids. 
and placing your hands together and pulling downward to stretch the trapezius muscles and rolling that over into the forearms. Remember always to stretch comfortably, mild tension, never pain, and try to relax through the stretch as you do them. You'll notice your breathing should be comfortable as you do that as well. Thanks for tuning in and stay safe and stay healthy.